Great day. I'm so excited to share God's word with you today. But before we dive in, will you pray with me? Thank you, Lord God, for another day, another opportunity to come before you, another opportunity for us to join together and to learn your word together, Lord God. Help us with our emotions. Help us to receive your word and to live your word daily. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Now, today we are talking about how God helps us with our emotions. And when we focus on God, we have joy. In previous lessons and earlier lessons, we talked about how God helps us with our emotions and how to deal with them. Even when we feel those emotions like anger or sadness or fear, we can still have joy. I know, right? That sounds kind of odd, but it's true, we can still have joy. So what do I mean by that? Well, in life, tough situations happen. That'll make us sad, or maybe we become angry or fearful, and we can still have hope because of Jesus. It's kind of like being stuck in the house, but looking forward to a fun family trip or looking forward to playing outside or even ice cream. I know those are very, very small examples, but believing in God, believing in Jesus and having our hope in Jesus is much, much bigger. So when we focus on God, we have joy. See, God's mercy helps us with all of our emotions and every situation everyone. Nothing is too big for God. Again, there are many verses in the Bible to help us remember this. Our memory verse is just one of them. If you've already watched our earlier lessons on emotions, then you're pretty familiar with our memory verse. It is Psalm chapter 9 verse 2. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. All right, now can you repeat that after me? I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. All right, good job. Now, no matter what we are going through, we can be glad and rejoice in God and sing praise. He shows us mercy every single day. Our Bible verses today talk about Paul and Silas who are on a mission to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. So we are gonna read in Acts chapter 12, excuse me, Acts chapter 16, verses 22 through 34. And this is about Paul and Silas being in prison. All right, so stay with me. There are several verses, but I'm sure you're strong enough. You can hang in there and pay attention. All right? Okay, let's dive in. Verse 22. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them in prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. So in those verses, Paul and Silas are put into prison after being beaten by a crowd. So can you imagine that? Ooh, that's a tough situation. Verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas are praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors flew open, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. Okay, so for those verses, they're in the prison, a huge earthquake happens while they are praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners are listening to them while they're doing this. And when the earthquake happens, 
it unlocks everything from everyone and everyone is pretty much free and they can just take off and run. So verse 27, when the jailer woke and saw that the prisoner doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to hurt himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. So for those verses, the jailer was so fearful, he was so afraid that everyone or that some of them had left, he thought the great idea would be to hurt himself. And that was not a great idea. So Paul spoke up and told him, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. We are all here. Pretty much don't be afraid, right? So verse 30, then he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them to the same, he, and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. And he was baptized at once, he and his family. Then he brought them up into his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. Wow, praise God. How awesome is that? So this last portion, after, the, after Paul and Silas speak to the jailer, the person that's keeping them in jail, and tells him, no, do not hurt yourself. The jailer asked Paul and Silas, how, how do I become saved? How do I do that? And so Paul and Silas, speak to him and his family, share the word of the Lord with them, and they become saved and get baptized. And they, Paul and Silas also get shelter and some food to eat as well. I mean, God just worked everything out, right? So how awesome is it to know that God is in control no matter what situation we are in? Because that was a tough situation for Paul and Silas, right? So even though Paul and Silas were locked, locked up in prison, they kept their focus on God. There was an earthquake and they could have escaped. They could have ran. They could have said, you know what? Whew, I'm free. I'm out of here and took off running. But they did not. Instead, they prayed and sang songs to God. And they were able to help the jailer and his family and the prisoners as well because they were listening and they shared the word of God and the people were saved. And you guys did such a good job listening through those verses. And I hope that you sit down with your family and read those again so that you can get a little more understanding. Okay, so good job you getting this word in. All right. What time is it? It's time for the review. It's time for the review. That's right. It's time for the review. All right, so we want to hold on to God's word, right? So let's make sure it sticks. Let's play a memory game. I'm going to ask you a few questions, four actually, and you're going to see them on the screen. Each of, you're going to see four answers on the screen, excuse me, four answers are going to pop up on the screen. And I'm going to ask you four questions. Each of them is the answer to the questions that I'm asking, okay? Who were thrown in prison? Hmm? Who were the people that were thrown into prison? I'll give you a moment. Did you say Paul and Silas? Good job! You got that right. Now, Paul and Silas sang hymns because they had what? This is question number two. Paul and Silas sang hymns to God because they had what? 
They had Savior. Mm, I don't think that's it. They had Joy. That's right. They had Joy. Good job. All right. We can have joy even in the worst of times because of we can have joy even in the worst of times because of Paul and Silas? No, that's not right. Because of Jesus? That's right. Good job. Because of Jesus. Now, our last question, number four. When we ask Jesus to be our what he will send his holy spirit to live in our hearts and give us joy now there's only one answer left so i know you know this one when we ask jesus to be our to be our joy no when we ask jesus to be our Savior. Yeah, of course. I said there was one answer left, right? You guys are so smart. Yes. To be our Savior, he will send his Holy Spirit to live in our hearts and give us joy. Good job. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. He is in control. God is always in control, no matter what we're going through. And he is so good to us. Now, remember, no matter what we are going through, we can be glad and rejoice in God and sing praise to him. He shows us mercy every day, not just Sunday, not just Wednesday, every single day. We don't have to stay fearful or sad or angry, and we have joy in our Lord Jesus Christ. We can pray to God and ask for his help with our emotions, and we can share these feelings with our parents and family members and our loved ones to help us understand our feelings and to help us work through them. Remember, you are not alone. Now, let's close with our memory verse. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. God bless you, my friends. Thank you.